So before we get into the specifics of treatment, the first step is we, we need to adequately evaluate the fistula tract. So when we're assessing patients, we look at the external surface, we can do a physical exam. But as I, as I tell many of my residents, the external exam is really only the tip of the iceberg, and it really doesn't tell us what's happening completely underneath. So in this situation here, you have it looks like there's an abscess. So it looks like there's a pimple. You can see the red area of the skin, but we really don't know what's going on underneath the surface of the skin. You might have a single fistula tract, or you might have a very complex branching network of fistula tracts. And so because we can't see underneath the surface of the skin, we really need to rely on imaging tests. And so the best test of choice is an MRI scan. So the MRI is a surgeon's best friend, but it's also as a gastroenterologist, it helps us decide on how best to treat patients. So we wanna know if there's an abscess that needs drainage, and this MRI scan can serve as a blueprint or a roadmap for the surgeons when they go in to try to drain the abscesses and then decide if they are going to put in the cetons, which I just mentioned. When we do an MRI scan, we can categorize fistulas as simple or complex. And this will become important when we're deciding on the best treatment for patients. So a simple fistula is shown here, and you can see that it's a very low lying fistula that does not involve much of the anal sphincter or the anal muscle. In contrast, a complex fistula involves a lot of the muscle and it may have an abscess and there may be multiple fistulas or multiple branches. So the reason why it's important to differentiate between simple and complex fistulas is because the treatment is different. So here's an overview of what I think of when I'm treating a patient with perianal fistulas. First of all, it's essential to know if there's an abscess or not. If there is an abscess, this is when we get these surgeons involved and the surgeons are very helpful because they can go in and drain the abscess. And as I mentioned before, they may choose to put in a seton into the fistula tract. Once the abscess has been drained adequately, that's when we can start to use medications to suppress the immune system. And typically we use a combination of therapy, which I'll discuss in more detail. In contrast to these complex fistulas, simple fistulas don't necessarily require all these steps. We may simply choose to use antibiotics or immunosuppressive medications. And then sometimes we can even use a surgical procedure to open up the fistula and allow it to heal from the inside. So this is called a fistulotomy. And the reason why we would not try a fistulotomy with a complex fistula is because you'd be cutting into too much muscle and that would, uh, patients would be at a very high risk of developing incontinence. 